Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a beer, it's time for some Path of Exile discussion. So there's been a bunch of patch notes that have been previewed for 3.15.2, uh, an upcoming patch that GGG appear to be planning to release tomorrow unless something is found with it. So when I say tomorrow, I mean tomorrow New Zealand time, uh, probably when this video is 24 to 27 hours old. However, uh, GGG are pretty clear that if it needs to be delayed, it will be delayed. So if they were to find a serious fault late in testing, then we might not get this until later in this week. This has a number of pretty significant changes to the expedition vendors. Uh, so Rog and Gwynnon being the main two, they're going to get a bunch of changes here, uh, some of which are going to be great, some of which are going to be less impactful. So firstly, I think this is one of the really important ones. Expedition vendors can now offer item level 86 items in their shops. So there's a number of reasons that this matters. Uh, particularly for a couple of item types, and here I'm talking about energy shield armors and in particular bows. There are, uh, there are item level 83, oh, sorry, 86 only mods that are generally things people consider very important to have on these items. So for instance, an item level 85 bow, the most additional arrows that it can roll is plus one. Uh, an item level 86 bow gains access to the additional suffix of the many, which adds two arrows to bow attacks. Uh, of the Many is so much more powerful than the Of Splintering mod uh, that it's something that is just phenomenal to see. And this will now be available as a craft from ROG. Uh, the reason that it matters that it's from ROG is that the Of the Many uh, the of the of Many suffix is 10 times rarer than Of Splintering, the plus one arrow. And ROG has t uh, crafts where it'll upgrade the tier of various crafts. So it's not that rare to get Of Splintering, uh, and if Rog offers you a bow that has of splintering on it already, uh, there is a modest chance that he will then be able to upgrade that to of the many, uh, which will help you get yourself a really good bow. Rog in general has been really good for crafting early league, uh, early league uh, amulets and early league rings, especially if you just want life and resist stuff and belts as well. Belts really all league. So I'll be interested to see what happens with this. Uh, other good mods to keep an eye out for. Elemental damage with attacks on belts, you can now get the top tier of, uh, likewise amulets, and also uh, there's energy shield, uh, percentage energy shield increases, and also if, if Rog offers a colossal tower shield, I'd also take that because there's a chance of upgrading to a lot of tier one defense rolls. So uh, the next change is not a power change like the first one, it's a quality of life one, but it is a very significant quality of life one. When offered an option to remove modifiers with the lowest modifier level when dealing with ROG, the item pop-up will now display the modifier which will be removed, or if it's a 50-50 shot between two or a, a one in three shot between three, it will show all of the possible modifiers which could be removed if there are multiple. Uh, this is going to be an absolute godsend to see here. Uh, these crafts, these sort of surgical, these sort of semi-surgical annuls, are really, really powerful sometimes, but also sometimes they can be an absolute trap. Uh, a good example of why they can be a trap is that tier one life rolls on items tend to be, uh, with the exception of chest armor, uh, they tend to be really low modifier levels. And so you can often lose a tier one life roll when you're hoping to lose something else. Uh, another thing that can be lost with one of these crafts is plus one to the level of all chaos skill gems on a weapon. Uh, or the equivalent for other for for various other elements. So it'll be really good to have a warning that hey, guess what? You probably don't want to do that because that's going to crangle your item. When you skip a crafting offer from Rog, the next crafty offers will no longer be the same craft you skipped or a craft of the same type. Really, this should have been in place all along, uh, and that's going to be an improvement. Uh, Rog's offer to apply random quality will only occur once. That's the big change here, and that when it does change, it will be a minimum of ten percent. Rog has an, a chance to offer to corrupt your item with a high chance of corruption implicits on the final deal. Uh, this is going to be interesting. I think there'll be some really cool stuff that will come out from here. Uh, and I'm keen to play around with Rog a little bit more in the future once these changes are made. Uh, Rog now offers only the following options for dual deals. Reroll prefixes, suffixes, modifier values of prefixes, mod values of suffixes, add a prefix, add a suffix, and corrupt the item with a high chance of getting a corruption implicit. So one of the things with jewels was that uh, ROG, oh well, jewel mods in general, now this is only jewels, this doesn't apply to abyss jewels, all jewel mods are the same minimum level of one. Uh, so for that reason, it was a little bit of a mess that they'd have things like remove a prefix 
Uh, sorry, remove a mod with the lowest mod level. All that meant was just remove a mod at completely at random. Uh, so this will be a little bit more intuitive than it was, uh, where where it would you would think it was going to remove a low tier mod, but it was just removing a random one. Ultimately, the thing that's good with the uh, with Rog is that you've got the ability on jewels that if you get two synergistic prefixes, uh, you may have the option to scramble a suffixes a couple of times uh, and try and get one more suffix that is uh, synergistic with them. Rogs offers to apply incubators, quality types, or anointments are now cheaper. I never realized they were particularly expensive. I never realized any of Rogs crafts were expensive, to be honest. Uh, but that will be, you know, just a minor improvement. Rogs offers now cost slightly more lesser and common artifacts and fewer gr greater and grand. This is a good change because you did stockpile way too many of certain types. Uh, so this is going to be all upside. Now, here's something interesting. Chance to obtain corrupted or influenced rares from Gwenon has been increased. Note this doesn't increase the ch uh, doesn't affect the chance of obtaining unique items from Gwenon. So presumably these will replace the non-influenced and non-corrupted rares. Broadly speaking, with Gwenon, uh, the reason that her corrupted items suck is because they tend to have four mods. Uh, for an item that you receive corrupted to be of any use, so when I say corrupted, I mean it has a vial implicit on it. Uh, it generally needs to have the maximum number of mods and it generally needs to have fairly well rolled mods. They don't need to be great, but they need to be fairly well rolled. Uh, unfortunately, the this is not appearing to adjust that. So I think that the corrupted items, and that will include the double corrupted items that she often gives out, uh, will continue to be rubbish. The influenced rares though, uh, getting more of them will be interesting, especially in conjunction with item level 86 items. Uh, getting something that's influenced an item level 86 can be a useful start for a lot of endgame crafts. Uh, and if you get something that looks pretty special, then, you know, say for instance, an influenced uh, Colossal Tower Shield at item level 86, then that's definitely something to keep your eye on and to maybe do a little bit of research before you trade it away. Uh, the average stack size for Danig's exchange for lesser common and greater artifacts has been increased. Uh, I don't really use Danig's exchange very much at all uh, on here. It's just something that... I mostly use his currency to purchase the uh, to purchase logbooks and to purchase the other reroll currencies. So for that reason, I don't think this is going to affect me that much. Uh, maybe you use Danny's stuff a bit differently to me, but um, we'll we'll have to have another. I'll have to have a reassessment of that later. Minimum discount for Danny's exchange deals has been increased. So I think that he was offering them at uh, zero point six through zero point nine uh, of the currency that you're uh, of his currency for each one of the currency that you're buying. Uh, so presumably this means 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. Uh, that'll be a slight buff to those currency exchanges. Tugen now offers more items priced in common and greater artifacts compared to lesser artifacts. This will be a godsend. Uh, I've definitely have run out of lesser artifacts while I've still got lots of common and greater. and have to, I've had to be pretty stingy with the lesser ones. I think the intention is for the lesser ones to be the sort of rubbish tier ones. Uh, so the fact that they were one of the more valuable of two gens is being fixed now, as I see it. Uh, price of some items offered by two gen has been reduced, mainly those that were priced in the thousands. Uh, so occasionally two gen will have a trap item there. Uh, I've seen divine orbs that have been 2,700 of one of the currencies. You know, things that are just a really bad deal. I don't mind having the odd bad deal offered to you. Uh, but anyway, they're going away, those ones, it seems. Uh, Remnant modifier that generates chests have more rarity, no longer rolls in logbook areas. Now, the reason that they say here is that logbook areas drop extremely few regular items, so this mod was not very beneficial there. However, this is going to have a pretty significant increase in the power of logbook areas because this is a pretty common remnant modifier and it's going away, and that just means that all of the better ones are going to be more common. Uh, so this is going to be a an additional buff to logbooks, I think. Uh, and logbooks are already pretty good. Expedition bosses now drop more loot per remnant affecting them. Uh, this is going to be a reason to not beeline to the boss, but to do some other stuff, uh, you know, to uh, actually set them off a late in an explosion chain. There's just an option for more risk for more reward. Uh, not sure that this is going to be the right call to do very often, but at least the option is there. Expedition uh, bosses now scale their currency and vendor reroll currency with the area level. This is a really good change. Uh, these should not drop as much loot at low tier as they do, and they probably should drop more at high tier because they're quite hard. 
Uh, so I think that that's a good, that is a good change to see. Uh, then there's a couple of changes to the area in which you can't place explosives, which is a quality of life improvement, but a big one. So this is definitely much appreciated. So there's this section called general improvements. Uh, the first thing here is a massive nerf to one of the most dangerous monsters in the game, the Baronite Thaumaturge. Baronite Thaumaturges are the things that kill you in Baron influence maps, and they are getting uh, basically brought down to earth a little bit in power. Uh, so I think that this will be a really popular change. These have been one of the worst offenders for not necessarily one-shotting you, but for one-volleying your character. So you'll be in a situation where if you muck up and get hit by one of these, by the time that you're free from the stun from that first one, you're probably dead to the seven uh, to the seven other Baronite Thaumaturges that have hit you in that time. Uh, these changes to maximum cast range have also applied to Unearthed Runecasters, Unearthed Urchins, Black Scythe Arbalest, Detonation Totems, uh, Detonation Totem being a big one, Carnage Pillars, Stygian Revenants, Escaped Revenants, Mortality Experimenter, Flesh Sculptor, Hunting Party, Primal Chimeral, Primal Scrabbler, and Primal Rex. So the big ones here, Detonation Totems, uh, they probably shouldn't be off-screening you. That's the Corpse Explosion Totem. Uh, probably shouldn't be off-screening you. And Stygian Revenant. Uh, those things are so dangerous. These are the things that are like the Spider Lair Boss. So the Spider Lair Boss is a terrifying variant of a Stygian Revenant. Uh, they do just have really powerful attacks, and they're some of the most dangerous monsters in the game. Uh, crafting bench recipes are being added to apply a specific enchantment to a flask, and this will be an automatically given crafting bench uh, recipe as well. Uh, these are going to come up available. Uh, these are going to come up available in the as soon as you kill Katava. So that's a good spot for them. Uh, this means that once you get to end game, you will be able to put whatever recipe, uh, whatever you want, on a flask. There, uh, I have to assume that these will cost a little bit more than rolling them naturally does. That's generally GGG's approach to things that mitigate RNG's, uh, RNG's effects. So for instance, uh, it costs 1500 fusing orbs to a uh, six link an item deterministically, whereas doing so through RNG is generally speculated. Like the largest sample size that exists says that it's one in a thousand chance on a 20 quality item. I'm not sure that that's exactly right, but I personally believe it to be. Uh, that's based on someone who did a sample size of 100,000 fusing orbs. They got exactly 106 links from it. So based on that, um, I think you'll find that these might cost 20 or 24 of the appropriate orb, the uh, instilling orb. Uh, note that in kindling orbs, that's the ones that give various flask effect or flask duration and the like, but that turn off flask recharge while in use. Uh, there is no recipe for those, but that's fine because like who, you know, th those are easy to roll what you want on them. Uh, added a crafting bench recipe to remove enchantments from an item. This is an absolute godsend, and honestly, I can't believe it's taken this long for this to be introduced. Uh, there are a number of enchantments that you can get on an item that seem like they're all upside until you realise that there's some sort of some sort of drawback to them. Uh, a couple of examples would be the heist enchantments that change quality. Uh, these are an upside until you want to trade off your item to someone else that's playing a different build to what you're playing. Uh, and then they have a, they have a use for the original quality on the item and they're just not interested in your item as a result. Or additionally, it's for those of you who have accidentally uh, applied a Merciless Labyrinth enchant to a Goldrum. Uh, I've certainly made that mistake myself. For those of you that don't know what that does, it causes it to have a pretty high mi minimum level. I think it might be like 45 or so, which effectively ruins your Goldrum. Uh, Monsters with Hex Font no longer of Inflict Silence. Uh, so this is going to basically remove most of the benefit of uh, jewels that have the uh, the Vile Implicit, you cannot be cursed with silence. Uh, this is going to mean that other hexes that, you that come from these monsters will be slightly more common. Uh, so this is going to be a net, very minor net nerf to melee characters and a considerable net buff to casters. Monsters that cast curses now have global cooldowns to prevent multiples of the same monster repeatedly cursing players. This is a huge improvement. Uh, so what's happening here is that when there are monsters that can cast, say, flammability, there's those uh, necromancers that cast flammability, uh, these are being nerfed so that if you've been hit by flammability from one of them and then you use an anti-curse flask, you will not immediately be hit by flammability again because you can't have those all of the monsters in that instance 
lose the ability to cast flammability until a few seconds have passed. Uh, now, upgraded the description for the Trader Keystone passive to properly reflect its functionality. So the Trader is one of the class, uh, is one of the uh, Timeless Duel exclusive Keystones, and from memory, I think it's a I think it's Timeless Duel exclusive still, uh, and it's the one that causes you to gain flask charges for each empty flask slot that you've got. Now, what a couple of people have noticed is that the Trader seemed to have been changed and had a massive stealth buff a couple of leagues ago where instead of it applying these additional flask charges to one of your flasks at random, it then seemed to be applying them to all of your flasks. Uh, it appears that this is intentional, and so the intention is that if you're using the trader, uh, you will actually get a considerable uh, benefit from having one or two empty flask slots at a high, you know, that's a high cost, but there's a lot of things you can do with this now that flasks can be auto-triggered, uh, and so there's lots of shenanigans to discover there. Uh, tweak the visual effects of Storm Rain based on community feedback. Please let us know if you have any issues. Uh, this is probably a very good thing because I had heard people say that Storm Rain and Voltaxic Burst were skills that probably needed an epilepsy uh, seizure, seizure slash trigger warning on them. Uh, I've not played with either of them myself, but I have heard that Storm Rain is just visually blinding. So this will be a good thing to see. Additionally, there have been some fixes for the Transcendence Exsanguinate microtransaction, which apparently was not looking anything like its uh, display video. Uh, so hopefully this fixes that. They're saying that it's been fixed. It looks so good in the display video that I was almost tempted to play it. And then I heard people complaining that it was, uh, that it, the in-game version didn't look the same. Uh, up, after that, there's just a number of bug fixes and these are mo like these are the sorts of things that are not particularly significant. Uh, but one thing that is significant for crafters fixed a bug where implicit attribute modifiers could would block explicit attribute modifiers from rolling on specific base types. Uh, this is an important change for some crafters. Uh, if you were one of the people who knew about this and was exploiting it, then good, you're not going to be able to do so anymore. However, for most people, this was actually a drawback, not an advantage. Uh, and so this is just something to note that I think it would, I believe it would to be with amulets previously, that um, amulets that say had strength on them couldn't roll further strength. If it was an amber amulet, it couldn't roll further strength. Uh, although I haven't looked into it because it felt like the sort of thing that was skirting too close to the edges of um, potentially cheating there. So I, I felt that like it was completely wrong. Uh, one thing that's important, there's been a fix, or well, there's been a fix to Jonah Unchanged, one of the exiles that can deal so much damage sometimes. He was sometimes dealing double damage, and it wasn't known. Uh, and the Stone of the Currents uh, challenge, which is not that hard, but it was failing to give credit sometimes, uh, that's been fixed now. So, uh, that's a whole bunch of information there, but if you've got comments or questions, definitely fire away below. Uh, otherwise, this should be going live pretty soon. Uh, as I say, tomorrow if available, but it might be delayed to later in the week if it needs an additional time to be prepared. May Evolves have interesting results, and I'll see you back in game.